Welcome, friends of Japanese prints. I'm Dieter Manshura. I'm the manager and owner of the Ortolino Company, where we sell Japanese prints in weekly online auctions. And we produce these videos that are always somehow related to Japanese prints. Today, I want to talk about a very important and also very famous uh, artist, Japanese printmaker of the 20th century. His name is Shiro Kazamatsu. And um, there's something a little bit specific about him, a little bit special, because there were two very important art movements in Japanese printmaking in the 20th century, especially in the first half of the 20th century. And these are the Shinhanga art movement and the Sosako Hanga art movement. And Shiro Kazamatsu, he covers both. Well, for those who are not familiar with these art movements, just in a few short words, Shinhanga was the kind of renaissance of the old Japanese printmaking in a team where the artist makes just the design and then comes the carver, he carves the blocks and the printer and he does the printing and there's a publisher, well, he's responsible for selling. So it was a teamwork. Um, and this is Shinhanga in the 20th century. And so Sakohanga, well, these were artists who were no longer satisfied with this way of working. They thought they had learned the concept of a genius artist as a genius in, in Europe when they studied in Paris. And they thought, hey, an artist, he has to do everything himself. Um, otherwise, this is just an artisan product. And this movement is called Sosako Hanga, and it's also much more Western oriented, and you will see more Westernized, Western designs uh, on, Shin, on Sosako Hanga prints. Well, this just as a small um, ex excursion, but back to our artist, Shiro Kazamatsu. He was born in 1898 in Tokyo, and at the age of 13 was the usual age, um, for Japanese youth, but also European youth at that time, to start an apprenticeship or to start to work. Uh, at the age of 13, he joined the painting school of Kaburagi Kiyokata. And a few years later, and there he learned painting and he learned um, printmaking, woodblock printmaking. In 1919, uh, Shiro Kazamatsu met Watanabe Shotsaburo. And Watanabe Shotsaburo, he was the guy um, who, you can even say the inventor of the Shinhanga art movement. He was the great mentor and he was a publisher. So the, the guy who was interested in, in, in selling, yeah, in, like a print shop. And Shiro Kazamatsu started uh, to make designs for Watanabe. Uh, from 1919 on, and this went until the late 1940s. And until then, Kazamatsu had designed so roughly 50 um, prints for, for Watanabe. From 1948 until 1950, just two years, <coughs> Kazamatsu made eight designs for the publisher Kinjiro. He had left Watanabe, uh, just eight designs. You will find these eight designs um, not very often in the market, very rare, and the cooperation lasted only for two years. And afterwards, from in the early 1950s, then Shiro Kazamatsu changed to the publisher Unsodo. Unsodo, an old traditional publisher in Kyoto, not in Tokyo. And I will late show you later prints, and you will begin to recognize a little bit the difference between these different um, periods of um, creativity of Kazamatsu. Yeah, and it doesn't stop. In the early 1960s, Kazamatsu began um, to work completely for himself without the team of a publisher, uh, Sosaku Hanga style, experimenting um, in, in this and, well, not only self-designed, but also self-carved, self-printed. 
and often also self-published. Yeah? They try to sell themselves, not using a, a publisher. It didn't always work so smoothly, so also they had to make compromises. But this is the concept behind it. Kazamatsu became rather old. He died in 1991. And now let's take a look at a few of these prints. Well, this example uh, that was published with Watanabe. The Watanabe artisans, the carvers and printers, they had a very high skill level. And this is really very elaborate, shows a rainy um, day. Let's take some, a look at some other examples. Yeah, here you have um, two, well, this shows two Maiko, um, Maiko or Geisha apprentices in front um, of a pagoda and there's a cherry blossom. Uh, let's take a closer look at that. Yeah, I want to show it to you because it's so typical for Watanabe. Watanabe, um, yeah, he wanted to sell and, and he wanted to accommodate Westerners. And he wanted to accommodate the stereotypes that Westerners had about Japan. I mean, this was made, I think, in the 1930s or something like that. And by then, Japan was an industrialized country. And this is, it's, it's, it's tourist Japan. I sometimes call it Disneyland Japan. It's not the reality anymore. But nevertheless, these are beautiful prints, yeah? And I don't say this is in a negative sense. I love this Shinanga, but um, I want to mention it. Uh, another example, yeah, here, pine tree on a rainy day. And I selected this one because it, it shows the extremely high level of good Shinanga prints. When you look at that, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's a rainy day. You really have the impression, hey, that's ugly. There you have a small person with an umbrella and you have the feeling, oh, it must be cold outside and, and, and unpleasant. You never get this feeling when you look at a Japanese print from the 19th century. And, and this is the high art of, of Shinhanga. And therefore, many people, including me, appreciate Shinhanga prints. So let's Jump to the next. Yeah, these are two examples by um, of these eight prints that Kazamatsu made for the Kinjiro publisher. It's rather close in the style and also in the skill level um, to the way how the Watanabe artisans worked. And as I said before, very rare, not often to be found in the market, and, and expensive, expensive like the Watanabe prints, especially when they, when they are early. Okay, and now these are two examples published with Unsodo. Uh, in the market, the Unsodo designs are the one, the least uh, expensive ones, yeah? And they are a little bit different. They are not so elaborate. Um, not so refined when you look at that one, for in instance. Let's, let's enlarge it a little bit. Uh, let's take the next one, yeah. Yeah, you see here the ships, they are stylized, yeah. They are not really technically refined. There, there is little gradation. It's a little bit more in the tradition of 19th century. Nevertheless, it's Shinanga and it's beautiful, yeah. So next, yeah, this, these are examples now of the self-carved, self-published, self-printed um, works by Shiro Kazamatsu. And here we have one example, yeah. This one, um, let's enlarge it here. Let's go, yeah, no, that, I, I want that one. Looks really uh, abstract. You see a bird, it's not completely abstract, but it was in the 1960s and quite a few artists, not only Shiro Kazamatsu, also Toshi Yoshida, uh, in the 1960s they started to experiment even with abstract designs. Well, you've seen a few examples 
and you may have recognized a little bit the difference. I want to give you now a few collector tips. First of all, prices. Okay, this is always um, uh, of, of paramount interest, of course. Shiro Kazamatsu prints in the market, let's say, you can buy them from roughly $300 to $2,000, sometimes also more. And um, as I said before, Unsoro is probably in the, in the lower range and Watanabe Kenshiro in, in the upper range. And some Sosako Hanga by Kazamatsu, it, it, it depends. Sosako Hanga is more a small niche market, but also they may have very high prices. Um, you will find early and posthumous impressions. Early impressions are always more in, uh, expensive. Posthumous means printed after the death of the artist, but printed from the original blocks. So they are originals, yeah? But posthumous uh, prints are cheaper than earlier ones. Then you have open and limited editions, of course. Um, limited editions, usually on bottom left, um, you find something like eight slash 200. That means this is the number eight out of a total edition of eight uh, of 200 prints made from this design, and there are not more. Yeah. Uh, open edition means well the artist or the publisher can print as many as he wants and you won't find any edition numbers on it. Um, another thing you should do, you should know as a, as a collector, there's something a little bit tricky about signatures. Uh, most Shin Hunger prints, also those by Kazamatsu, do not bear a signature. But when you see a signature on a print published by Watanabe. Then the signature was done by hand in pencil, but not by Shiro Kazamatsu, but by an employee of Watanabe. Yes, you find that. You find that also on prints designed by uh, Hasui Kawase. They were also uh, published with, with Watanabe. When you see a signature, on a print published with Unsoro, then this is also not hand signed by the artist, but it's a stamped signature. Okay, you will find more in our articles. We have one article for each of these periods, um, with different publishers, and for his Sosaku uh, Hanga um, create creations. And okay, I am coming now to the end. Andreas Grund, a collector with a lot of effort, he privately published, well, this catalog raisonné um, with the works of Kazamatsu. I'm not sure it, it was, when it was published, it was not available in bookstores, and I'm not quite sure where you can get it now. But, okay, search on the internet if you're interested in, in Kazamatsu, it's quite helpful. Maybe you can find um, a, a used copy on, on, on eBay or somewhere. I don't know. But I wanted to show you and mention it. It's very helpful. Pretty good. Privately published by Andreas Grund. Well, this is now really the end. No, nope, there's one thing. Of course, we have rather frequently prints by Kazamatsu in our auctions. And you may be interested only in Kazamatsu and, and only in Hasui or whatever. And you don't want to skim through 15 pages of our online catalog that comes out as a fresh catalog every Sunday evening. Uh, but we have a nice feature. Sign in on our website. And there, among all these applications of your account, you'll find one that is called Artist Alert. And you can specify one or more artists that you're interested in. And when we have prints in, in one of our auctions, our system will automatically send you an email and notify you um, about this print, even show it with a nice image in the email. Well, really enough, long video today. Thanks for your patience and 
please take care of yourself and I hope to see you for our next video. Thanks. Goodbye.